Good afternoon, Dead Pockets. We're going to talk about Dead Pockets or Low Slope Sections on a Roof. My name is Brian with Grand Roofing and I try to share what I know because you might be looking for it. Alright, so what we got going on here is a roof I quoted a few months back. There's a small section here that actually had the wrong material on the job. So we're going to talk about Dead Pockets, maybe learn a little bit and some different material choices than what they had. So I don't have time to stick around. I've got things to do. We're going to do a quick uh, beforehand of this, do a quick walk over the roof and the projects we got going on. It's quiet now because the guys are off for lunch. I'm back. We're going to do that. And then I'll try to do a follow-up video because I've got to get home to the bus stop. I won't be able to come back until later tomorrow. All right, so what we had here when the roof was quoted, I saw asphalt shingles in here. And it's way too flat for asphalt shingles. We're going to talk about choices of material, slopes, pitch, basic concepts of that, what's going on out on the outside here, and what we're going to do different in a simple remedy and different options you may have. First off, slope. What am I talking about? Pitch. All right here's actually a good, good spot, cozy little spot. All right, so what you're going to do is use a pitch gauge or a simple tape measure and measure in 12 inches, or in this case, you would measure out 12 inches, and at that 12 inch mark, measure down and see how much of a drop it is. So if this, just by eye, is probably a 612, means six, uh, 12 inches in, it's going to have six inch rise. Since you can't go into your roof deck, you're going to measure out six inches. Use a tape measure and a level. So come out 12 inches, make sure it's level, and then measure down at that point, and it should be about six inches, or whatever that number is, is the pitch or the slope of the roof. Why is that important? Because asphalt shingles, pictures out there, when you come to a slope like this, they will honor shingles down to a 412, considered a low slope. Any lower than that, down to a three, some manufacturers say, okay, we're, we'll honor a 312 pitch if you use ice and water on the whole uh, section. So lower than that, which is this obviously, probably like a 512, 112, it's very low slope. Wrong choice. Save a few bucks now, pay a lot later. Trust me, trust me, trust me. All right, I'm trying to share what I know so you guys can avoid some accidents here. You know, when you're getting quotes, are people being descriptive enough to address things like this? So first off, if you have a low slope, shingles are made to shed water. So you have a shingle here, you have a shingle on top of it, water sheds off of this and it's pulled down by gravity. I know a thing called gravity is crazy, right? Sheds it onto the neck. Shingles don't waterproof a roof. It's not like a low slope system that is a pool, a pond, a liner, right? Shingles shed water. Why is it an issue when you get down into here? Well, it's so flat, water can actually run backwards up under them. Even if you have a little bit of a slope, say a 212 or a 312, let's use a 312 for that example. Manufacturers say, hey, if you have a 312 slope and use ice and water, we'll honor it, right? Biggest thing in that case is you get a section like this that water sheds, comes down, gets into a low slope area, and depending upon where you live here in my region, we get freeze and thaw and snow, ice, whatever. Well, it's warm in the attic, it melts, it runs down, or the temperature's right, the precip is in a liquid form, it runs down, gets into here. Well, when you get over a soffit area, like this right here, under that piece of wood is outside air under the soffit. It gets cold, it freezes up this area. So let's go back to our little 612 section here, and let's say we have an ice dam of two inches. It's gonna fill that little bit up, but flow over that two inches before it goes up and backs up enough to get under the shingle of the next course, the next row, right? So when it's a low slope section, down here on this, all right, it's not going to take much of anything of a dam here. A one inch dam right here will back that water up more than a foot. That's a bad scenario. That's where you want to use something like rural roofing, uh, modified, EPDM, TPO, something for a low slope roof system. Something that's going to allow it to back up. Now, instead of doing all that, something simple, especially on a size this big, I mean, this small I should say, is taking some lumber, which we've got. We're going to run two by fours from the bottom up here, up. We're going to try to get to that uh, sweet spot of a 412 or greater, not even messing with a three, at least a four, because we got the room for that. We have a piece of two by four as a nailer running up a valley line here, so that valley's like this. That valley's now going to change from my elbow being the pivot to out like that. So that's exaggerated. But it's going to go from here, draw a straight line up into that region, and I'll explain in a minute. It's going to come over, and a new valley line coming down right through here. That way that slope, ice and water, shingles, will shoot out. Even if you have an ice dam, it's going to have enough slope for the water to eject out of there, not back up into the pocket. Now for those of you that are dressing and thinking, hey, it's already dried in. Yes, we're trying to keep the guys moving, they dried in. What I was talking about is when we bring this up to about that point right there, we're going to ice and water the new deck, the new facet we just made. No bigger than that is, we're going to put a pass on it, and we're going to tuck under this pass of paper, synthetic paper right here, and go over the valley up and cover the section. We're just going to dry this all in again. On that note, your valley rule is your last defense. So if you did not tuck under or go over onto your new facet that you have here, 
if you had a leak, it's going to run down and go right in under your roof structure, which is not good to defeat the whole purpose. So there's always those people in YouTubeville, the land of the internet, they're going to comment about everything. They're going to comment about the plastic bucket having the wrong color for their region. That's not color correct. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They're just, there's crazy, crazy people out there. I'm going to talk about a couple of other quick little things right here with this brick wall. So the owner did notice, he's newer to the property here. Notice this uh, mildew growth over here. So the remedy for that is there's no kick out down here. You had an excessive amount of water pouring off this area here, coming down. It wasn't flash very good and it's running out. We're going to reflash all this. New aluminum flashing, four inch high, four inch out, seven inch up, shingle step, starter, step, shingle, step, shingle step, all the way up under here. But the kick out will come out into the gutter. It's going to allow the water to channel into the gutter. And then it's going to have counter flash all up this. The other thing he noted, which is right out here. Let me zoom in on it. See that handrail shining through that gap right there in between the fascia board and the gutter? He had water dripping down. Just showed me a video a little bit ago. Water's coming uh, coming through there. So this roof was built probably in the 90s. The gutters, I'm assuming, were put on at a later point. And the edge metal they had was going behind the gutter. Anytime you have apron, edge metal drip, some guys use a drip edge, uh, like a gable end drip on the bottoms because they're too lazy to buy different materials and just use one everywhere. It's wrong, but hopefully you're using apron. It needs to go over your uh, gutter here. What was happening is it was just dripping in. The other thing is some people don't hang their shingles down far enough and it doesn't give it a drip edge, so it just comes off the edge of the shingle and wicks back up under. So imagine this gable being a bottom eave, right? Water's running off this direction. Just have an imagination for a second. Your edge metal stops here, your shingle stops there. Water comes off that shingle, surface tension wicks under. Your shingles need to hang over. When they heat, they'll curl down just a little bit, giving it a nice drip edge. With the lack of those two materials and items, you're going to have water pouring in, rotting out fascia boards. So that's going to be addressed. That's why this is all rotten out here. As your shingle flash and everything comes up, you need to come up behind your fascia board. On that note, get some rot like this. It's because it was probably over time too tight to that, sucking in the moisture into the wood grain, causing it to rot out. So that needs addressed. But the flashing goes up behind it. Same concept right here when your deck that we're going to build comes out at that point. Your apron comes down. You got everything up under it plenty far. Your shingle's going to hang down a little bit. It gives a nice little drip edge for the water to run off. So the cost it would take to use a mineralized roll roofing with the lack of warranty here or the cost of EPDM or something, another low slope roof system, you can achieve for a lot less than just some two by four lumber and decking. It's not going to be much, probably about six two by fours or something. One up each side of the deck surfaces. So on that facet, this facet for the valley nailer, then probably two through the middle, then a small one here, small one here, and then your decking coming down over it, then dry it in. So pretty simple solution. Back to the trust me. Your material choices for the section you're applying it to are super important. You're going to be tempted. Economy is crazy right now in 2022. Not quite as bad as it was in the 08 era. But you try to save a few bucks now. I don't blame you. You know, I, I get it. I was there. But it's that creepy little thing called time. You think you save now. In a short period of time later, you're like, oh my God. What? You got water dripping in. It's not good. Use the right material for the section you're applying it to. If it costs a little more, trust me and invest in it so you don't have to buy your roof prematurely. Let's get a hail and then somebody else pays for it. Whole nother story. Do a quick walk over this real quick. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. It's a quick overview of that. I'll try to do a video afterwards. Like I said, I've got stuff to do. I've got to get the little one off the bus. I can't be here during the process. You guys are moving in on it. You're getting ready to snap a line across and this will be held up for this section here. Over here, I got the wood fixed. There was some rotten stuff on both sides of it chimney flashing was in bad shape gonna redo it that skylight was replaced at some point but the other two were gonna be redone so this is gonna come out once i get a tarp laid inside to catch any little debris we're gonna blow this off yank the, the skylight put the new one on be ready to go i got the flashing kits down there then this side will be getting dried in we got the front center u section here already roofed out the guys just got done with this and off for lunch uh, opened up for ridge vent got us opened up for ridge vent if you have enough ridge space, I really prefer ridge vents. Now, touch on ridge vent too. Uh, these are rafter, or I'm sorry, trusses, engineered trusses. If you have rafters, you're gonna have a center ridge pole here, what I'd call it. It's probably not the right terminology. Whatever, get over it. If I'm not talking your lingo in your region, there's a piece of lumber going this way, right? Then you have the rafters coming up to it. That takes up a little space, inch and a half all the way down. If you've got trusses, 
simply open it up. If you've got rafters, you got to account for that. You might need to open up more. Problem is, if you open it up too much, you may not have enough good solid lumber for your nails and your ridge cap to penetrate. So just a little tip on that. But it's venting a whole heck of a lot more across the entire ridge evenly, right? Instead of like, say, a box vent here. Um, especially, this is all cathedral area here. It's going to open up more. Here's what I'm talking about where you got the center beam here. Now it's still vented, but you are wasting some space because of that. You think an inch and a half, right? Not much, but the inch and a half, every inch it goes over, it, you know, it multiplies pretty quick. They also make nice little quick uh, anchors for ropes. There's the other skylight. That's the one I was on out here a few months back where they had absolutely no flashing on it. We're yanking that, replacing it. They're down there on the ground. Uh, we're on track to get this wrapped up today. We move on to the next. The content's been lagging just slightly, and I apologize for that. As I said, the top priority here at Grand Roofing is Grand Roofing. Staying busy, floating, being profitable, paying for the crew, material, suppliers, all that good stuff. And then the content. You know what you can do? Super simple thing. I hate asking for it. Simple little plug. Shameless plug. Thumbs up. Super free. It does help. I get comments. People are like, oh, unsubscribed. You're asking for a like. Really, is it that hard? I mean, this video is on 11 minutes out of my day to help you guys. I really don't mind, but if there's other people looking for it, you can do this and an algorithm wakes up and pushes it to other people. That's all I'm asking. It's not for me, it's for them. So, all right, babbling, babbling. I gotta be done, I gotta go, I got stuff to do. All right, until next time, be safe. We'll see you on the next video.